We're here because of one woman. This year sees the bicentenary of Ada Lovelace. She's credited with writing the first ever algorithm intended as an instruction to be carried out by a machine. It's this incredible legacy that these algorithms now aid and abet most aspects of our daily life. Every business will be also producing and making software, making technology in some way. Wearables are also super exciting and I, th I think there is a lot to happen there. I would say um, a lot of companies don't really know what to do with their data. I think a lot of companies haven't quite unlocked that yet. VR or augmented reality, I think that's a super, super interesting area. Being able to, you know, be, to step into this immersive world and learn about different countries or history or these kind of things uh, is really, really interesting. A lot of the work that I look at and also a lot of the work that Facebook is doing now is really around actually messaging and I think this is no surprise to you in the audience of you know the way that you think about you communicating with your friends two years ago and then probably in the last you know three days you've probably sent rich text, animated GIFs, et cetera, videos. Um, it's just become a much richer conversation. A lot of what we think about at the moment is really what is the nature of one-on-one -on -one communication or one-to-few communication. Um, and so to Sam's point, kind of putting the label on it is feeling that it's, it's very intimate. So a lot of work kind of goes into thinking about how are you gonna make this a more targeted, more personal experience. Gaming is inherently social because we all, you know, like probably most of us made our first friendships on the playground, I suppose, right? Playing. Our games help, you know, like people to come a little bit closer. Are we moving away from people actually doing work in the mines? Yes, so I go and I kind of do my work in the mine to actually just replacing the people with robots and sensors and, and the Internet of Things to gather the data and actually control the robots, etc. Now, some people would say, well, that's going to take away all our jobs because we have fewer people in the mine. And you could look at it the other way, which is work in the mine is actually quite unpleasant and very hard work. Now, the new challenge that that brings, how do you create these new skills? So how do you create the people who can analyze data, the data scientists of the future, the people who can control the robots, which is an entirely different skill set than working in the mine. Everyone has to go through this training that sort of um, acknowledges that we all have biases and the hard bit is moving from the unconscious part to conscious. So if I will consciously make sure that every time when I'm in a position where I can make a decision, I will consciously make sure that I'm not making a, a biased decision. Okay, girls who drop out of sports around 13 or 14, same thing they drop out of uh, science subject. So what we're trying to do is to really go and have a lot of partnership with schools, make it in a fun, though, in a gaming way. You don't have to be a software engineer to join the technology industry and specifically the gaming industry. Like I had no idea that there is a career in gaming. I'm generally passionate about technology and what's coming next. Uh, I think where you've had um, technology and software at the heart of everything, it's now going to be about the sensors to really capture data about everything that we do and really about taking uh, this data and putting it in big like database to actually analyze it and really improve um, the lives that we live. It is very important to celebrate uh, the work of women in technology um, and I think it is, it is you know, it gives us a forum to talk about, you know, like uh, what women have done and what the opportunities are going forward.